exactly what we were talking about before, even though it would have made possibly the greatest podcast uh, in Australian history, <laughs> possibly uh, all over the world, but you'll never hear it, and so... Made way too much honesty for a listening audience. Here, here's, here's the rest of our thoughts that <laughs> are fit for consumption. Welcome to the show. I'm mostly Justin Hamilton. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ben. And, uh, yeah, that was a good... You know what? I felt like we were doing... Uh, we, we were talking about how you read... Alan Moore's massive tome, Jerusalem, yeah, and yeah, now, yeah, yeah. which is, like, without exaggeration, about 45,000 pages, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, his, his big boast of it is, it's longer than the Bible, yeah, which is just such a fucking wank when you actually get through it and realise that at least a third of it is, uh, I don't know, window dressing. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know if he would consider anything he's written no. to be window dressing. I kind of I kind of love him for that as well. Yeah, yeah, Much yeah. He would he would find uh, my comments to be incredibly uh, patronising, but <laughs> it's it's part of his makeup. And it's, I don't uh, need your endorsement, you cunt. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I would never want to. I, I would like I would be reluctant to meet him. But um, he's one of the few I guys that him. I really respect that I actually do, wouldn't want. To, I don't know. Given the right circumstance, it'd be great. Like if you just passed him in the street. That's what I mean. Like but meeting him at some you, kind you of know, signing. If, some, if, some re- if for some reason you had a mutual friend and you got to hang out at dinner together, bang, I'm yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anything else, <laughs> it's going to be an unlevel playing field. There's a ch- there's a whole chapter that he writes. It, me, in... me talking to Alan Moore uh, without any real proper introduction would be like watching Rajah Ghul school a young Bruce Wayne on the ice. <laughs> You never mind your surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> he writes a he writes a hot. There's a there's an analog character of him in Jerusalem, uh, a character called Alma Warren, which is a female analog of Alan Moore. Right. And there's an entire seventy page chapter in it from the first person perspective of Alma of what she does every day, and it's basically his daily ritual. And all it involves is smoking copious amounts of weed <laughs> and then just wandering around Northampton and yep. soaking in the adulation of everyone that walks past. Yep. And, uh, we you should know. send that to Will. <laughs> <laughs> He'd love it. He's probably the only friend of ours that could, oh, yeah, I can relate to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we were saying, like, since I've, uh, since I, because that was the first book I've read in years and years and years. Mm. I used to be a big reader, but then technology and screens and all that kind of stuff put the fucking car. Oh, you go on analog. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, well, because I lost the... I, I, did you find you lost the ability to engage with long-form text once kind of the internet became ubiquitous everywhere? Uh, yeah, no, I think that's completely fair. That, yeah. That's why uh, <laughs> a lot of people come over to this house and they go, man, there are so many books and graphic novels and huh. things here. And, and I'm always surprised because in my head I always think, good work, Hammer, you really downsized. <laughs> But I like the aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. I like the colours. I like the way, you know, the different shapes go together. I like that you can pull those shapes apart and make new shapes. I also like the fact you can read them. (laughs) (laughs) They're great. How good are books? Yeah, the best. And I don't know, like, reading it on a device would just feel like it's another, for me anyway, Mm. would just feel like it's another, I don't know, disposable app like consumption of, yeah. of something that I don't know that should be kind of tactile whatever 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 mm. but I read this fucking ridiculously long book and since then I've read more books in this year than I've read in the last 10 years and right. it's only because all of them are you know a tenth of the size of Jerusalem so you right. be, be like I read a Philip K. Dick the other day and it was like 180 pages like 180 pages yeah that's a fucking evening mate I'll do that on the crapper <laughs> By the way, uh, that is a very long explanation for me to now go back in time to the beginning of this podcast and explain <laughs> why I wanted you to bring that up, which was, I was saying, what we were talking about before we started recording this uh, was like you reading that book so you can read lots of little books really quickly and this oh, one's yeah, going to go quick. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. I just wanted to loop that metaphor that nobody actually needed explained. <laughs> For a, a moment of amusement. Maybe yeah. one pedantic out there will be sitting going, Ah, oh, nice work, Hamo. I thought you'd forgotten. <laughs> Just like a festival show, it came full circle. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So yeah. funny, right? Yeah, fucking great. Um, I uh, Did we talk about Kong, Skull Island? Like, There's other things to talk about, but have you seen it? Are we going to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. 
I thought there was a scene that was so fucking funny. Yeah. And Guy Montgomery, you know, New Zealand comedian Guy Montgomery? Ah, uh, no. Oh, man, you would love him. He's a cracking bloke. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's a funny kid. Like man, he make he. I find him to be one of the most naturally funny people that I know. Funny bones. Yeah, he just makes me laugh constantly yeah. in all sorts of different scenarios. And so we go to see this movie, and you. Oh yeah, so you, you know, can the, spoil it. I've uh, seen uh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for people listening at home, like you know, I'm sure who's who's going to hear this movie spoiled and think, oh well, there's no point. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Now. It's, it's no usual suspects, Wait guys. A just real that fucking didn't relax. Stick to formula. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm about to tell you the bit that didn't stick to formula. But the, uh, so what happens is this. I know exactly is, the bit you're going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah the lizard. The lizard creature, and it's chasing them, and then they're trying to get on the boat. Yeah. The guy gets the grenades out and gets all these grenades on his body, and he goes to do the big martyr. I'll blow myself up and hold him off so you guys can escape. And then when the lizard swung around and just whacked him with the towel, and he flew off into the air <laughs> and exploded at the mountain, Guy Montgomery and I lost our shit. We were like, what the fuck? That is funny. And turned around. No one else was laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's no like, one. I, I listened to a podcast that reviewed it, and they they cited that scene specifically, and they were all kind of having a whine that they thought that was unnecessarily cruel. Yeah, what? It was fucking great. It was unexpected. It was a great visual gag, and like, you know, this is not a fucking. This isn't Schindler's List. Like, it's a ridiculous B movie about a giant. Yeah. Monkey killing people. What, is, is this a real statement on the fact that fucking dudes just can't laugh at themselves anymore? Oh, mate, that poor guy. <laughs> that poor guy, you know, he's just trying to do the right thing by his mates. And they treat him like that. Like, that's cruel. <laughs> like, that's cruel. Like, he's got a family, that fictional character. Like, that's bullshit. The, 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 these, these people on this other podcast were equating it to... Do you remember that death in Jurassic World yeah. of the personal assistant? That always felt a bit cruel. That feels See, crueler than this. Yeah, the one that, like, what happens if she gets, like, uh, uh, Feels, death it only it only feels cruel. Um, like it's still funny, but it still it feels cruel because just so much happens to her. Where was this? This guy's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be a martyr. <laughs> <laughs> It was only after because it, it was like to, a, sorry, it was like a Warner Brothers moment for me. Yeah, it was, it was like Wiley yeah. Coyote. It was yeah. fucking fantastic. Yeah. That, that part of the movie was great. I don't know. Like, I think I'm just maybe I'm getting old. Maybe I'm just seeing too much of it. But I'm at a point with. CG movies where it's just like, oh, it's just I like just video game. don't you get fucking care. No, I don't care either. I, I agree. Like, I feel like, the, especially, you know, this is how I know that I've changed, men, you know, my mentality. You know, like when I went and saw The Matrix Revelations or whatever it was, the second one when I was, pff, what, 21, 22, you know, all the stuff in between the big CG set pieces was... It wasn't boring, but it was like, oh, hurry up, get to fucking Neo punching Agent Smith. Oh, yeah. Uh, whereas now it's the complete reverse, and every time one of these big CG uh, fights starts, I'm just, I feel so fucking bored, and just so, you know, and, it's, and, I, and I just have that feeling I did when I used to play video games, where it's like, if this was the cutscene in the video game, I'd be smashing the buttons <laughs> to skip it, like, yeah. I don't want to watch this, this is fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, even that helicopter scene in Kong, it was, you know... It was superficially entertaining, but I, maybe I'm just done with it all. Yeah. Like, we went and saw Lego Batman together. We haven't talked about that. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. And, uh, like, I thought, like, the action in that was fantastic because it was innovative and it was, right. you know, it was something you hadn't seen before, but I just feel so much other stuff. It's just, all my head is thinking is it's just pix pixels punching pixels. Like, yeah. I know none of this has any weight or reality yeah, it's not real. Even, it's, even though it's, I, 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 I found it impressive. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. From a technical point of view, I thought, totally. wow, that looks impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't buy emotionally into it. engage. You're yeah. emotionally engage. Like, yeah. and I'm, I, I engage with the action in Lego Batman so much yeah. more because it's the same way you engage with cartoons more when crazy stuff happens. Because mm. it's like, well, this is, the, this isn't something you're not trying to recreate a reality that i'm already very familiar with mm. a and it goes into that uncanny valley thing where your brain just goes oh, it's not real mm. it's just a dude running around on a blue screen whereas when it's a little lego batman backflipping and fighting 500 other dudes it's like well this is the you know these are the rules of this universe and yeah everything totally makes sense within that context and so i engage more with what's happening yeah. i i thought um I, I enjoyed it while i was watching it Knowing full well I'll never watch it again. Yeah, of course. Uh, I thought all the performances were excellent to ride on the money, mm. except for one. Who? Who do you... Did you feel that there was someone Tom who was just pitched a little bit incorrectly? Uh, I, 
I, I didn't appreciate what's his name, Tom. Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, yeah I, I thought, thought was he ridiculous. was on. It was just a bad casting choice. Uh, yeah, I think so too. I'm uh, the rugged adventurer. No, you're you, not. You, <laughs> you're no. an English fop. <laughs> well, that's so funny. You know what? I actually like. I couldn't work out if they were deliberately undermining yeah. the expectation of it. In which case, he wasn't pitch. He wasn't performing it correctly. Yeah. He was playing it too straight. He had needed to be a little bit more roguish or a little bit yeah, more yeah, winky. Yeah. But I think the main problem was, and this is going to sound weird, he should have done it with an American accent. Yeah. If he did it with the American accent, it gives that mythic kind of feel going with everything else that's going yeah. on with the with the hardened black general with the with the older crazy archaeologist yeah, yeah, yeah. and this should have been the Marlboro man I'll always be there Indiana yeah, Jones yeah, yeah, character yeah, yeah, yeah. he should have done it with an American accent yeah I don't know I, I read a review that made a good point it said it felt like every character was in a completely different movie you know like John C. Riley's in the, the, oh, you know, yeah, the wacky but, comedy and <laughs> yeah John C. Riley was funny though he was great but that, they, they should have just done a little bit like that's hard to do for a whole movie but I thought I actually, I know it's in the trailer, but I actually still laugh pretty hard at the scene with the, uh, well, well you sort of skull crushers. Oh my god, what did they do? Oh, I don't know. I just called them that. It's like <laughs> never said it out loud before. <laughs> like I thought that was, even if it doesn't really fit in with the flow of the film. No, no, it's a he funny was the moment. highlight. He was the highlight of the movie. Yeah, and uh, Lego Batman was fun. Fun, but. Like, fucking exhausting, right? Oh, yeah. I was... Like, really exhausting. Yeah. By about an hour in, I was like... I My brain just checked out. I was like... I think was... we were sitting too close. Yeah. And also, just how much fucking visual information can be just mm. punching you in the face nonstop before you... you... I, I just... Yes, how yes. fast can things get? Like... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think I said this to you after it finished. Is, you know, if you took that movie back in time to the 20s and made people sit there and watch that, I don't think they could even process that oh, much yeah. information coming at them that fast. I think their brains would just yeah. short circuit. And what's going to happen to us when, like, the next two generations oh, totally. they kick in and they're showing us, look at this granddad. Oh, he just gave me another stroke. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be white noise. It'll be moving so fast. It's just one. All <laughs> oh, right. So, uh, is this a TV that's uh, lost power? Uh, again? <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it was it was it yeah. was very good though. But uh, yeah, I don't lots know. Lots of lots of uh, cute little casting choices. Ray yeah. Fiennes as Alfred, Eddie Izzard as Voldemort. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a Billy D. Williams finally getting to play Two Face after yeah. he played Harvey Dent. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. No, it was, a, it was a cute movie, but uh, I don't know. We're getting old, man. To think to think that there's kids that have they're going to watch that in 3D, no less. Yeah. And they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Bored. By the way, I have not seen a 3D movie in ages. And I'm pretty happy. Oh, that shit. I, I, I'm not into 3D. Uh, unless it's made for 3D. Well, unless it's, yeah, but even, yeah. Like, yes, like gravity. Gravity, yeah. Is sensational. Yeah, um, yeah. But for the most part, I don't feel like you need it. Do you know why it's shit? I actually only found this out the other day. No. Why it doesn't work? No. Because your brain. Because everything's too big. Th th that plays into it, but the, the, the main thing is your brain needs whatever it is. It's a certain amount of frames. Say it's like, you know, 20, 30 frames to f to adjust to the vision of what it's seeing and right. produce a 3D image. Right. But the way most modern blockbusters are edited now, it's just cut, 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 cut. So the scenes aren't actually long enough for your brain to fully process the 3D image. So that's why you right. get a headache. That's why it's not really popping out at you. Like, think of the fight scenes in those Marvel movies. It's just, you're not processing that in 3D. It's just, it's, it's moving so fast. You're, which is, and it's why movies like Avatar and Gravity look so fucking great in 3D. Because right. it's these long, slow tracking shots where yeah. you've got time to immerse. So, you know, that's why all those um, Marvel movies go under, undergo, like, 3D conversion process. They're not shot in 3D. It's yeah. just a total fucking marketing money-making thing. Yeah. I think if there's a big prestige film like The Walk or whatever, mm. or Gravity, mm. that's made specifically for 3D, I think it's fucking great. But, you know, yeah. for the most part, it's it's rubbish. Yeah. I'm not a fan of it. But I would like to... I, I think I would like to have seen Inception 
and Interstellar in 3D, Interstellar like good 3D. Great. Jesus Christ, that'd give you a panic erection when you got near <laughs> the gargantuan. The irony. I sat in the front row in IMAX for Interstellar, and it was, you know, I was. Was, was it like? Was it like when you were, like you were finding for the JLA, looking into the eye of Starro? <laughs> <laughs> and that might be the nerdiest thing I've ever said on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the nerdiest thing I've ever fucking laughed at. The nerdiest joke I've ever got. <laughs> Ugh, what are we? Um, there was someone who's been sneering at us for the whole time who's just kind of gone, hey. <laughs> <laughs> we went over that person. I gotcha! <laughs> no, Jokes there was one everyone. point I was like, I, may, I mean, I may, have, I may have been a little bit high, uh, but it was a pretty empty cinema, and I ended up literally on my side in the fetal position in this massive chair, just yep. during those just rocket takeoff was... scenes with the whole seat oh. shaking. I was going to say, and oh that was just when he God. when he left his daughter. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I would have been. No, that... don't, Matthew McConaughey, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> that and that entire um, docking sequence. I thought I was going to die during that docking sequence. The oh, the oh yeah, oh, with that great or- that organ playing, giving it that <laughs> yeah, yeah, making it feel like a um, <laughs> fucking hell. It, it feel it feels religious, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, Look yeah. at it, just fucking man shitting all over this planet with its fucking debris. <laughs> oh, everywhere we go, I have a bit of litter, mate. I'm human. Yeah, well, that's become a big problem now, space junk. Yeah, fuck. Big problem, yeah. yeah. Like, all this junk around the atmosphere. What a fucking toxic species, seriously. Mate, we, we like, we we put litter outside of our planet. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, now they've started saying that's maybe a way to look for life on other planets is to oh, right. not just look for radio signals anymore, but to look for uh, other people's space shit junk. orbiting the planet. Imagine if we saw, like, 37 billion years from here, this... Uh, planet in the Goldilocks zone, and the first thing we see is their Three Musketeers wrapper <laughs> of a very obscure chocolate bar. Oh, they got Three wow. Musketeers yeah, up in wow. the Proxima the universe is full of possibilities. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Better get there now. Yeah, it's, um, fuck, oh, I saw Life. Do you know that moon? Uh, that one, it's the new movie. Oh, yeah, 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 no, I have not seen yeah. it. They, it, it, was, it was just like watching... It's not. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It was like watching a B movie version of uh, Gravity, who had a baby with Alien. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and it turned into a B movie. Is That's it good? what happened. It's it's kind of fine while you're watching it, you know. Um, profound. There's no. There's a few. I think something happens at a point where you suddenly go, "Oh, it's that kind of movie," yeah. and then once you realise. It's that kind of movie. You can kind of work out the beats, yeah. and it's. I think it. Uh, I think it takes a swing at the end. Like I think it really, fucking, does its best to clear the yeah. clear the fence, yeah. uh, which didn't. I, I I picked it. Like I wasn't trying to pick it, but I just went oh, yada 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 yada, yeah, yeah. and, but you know you know what it made me realize. Uh, well, I I know this, but remember, I guess. The movie Alien is has like that opening scene where they where you get to know all the characters and they're eating. Yeah. That should be shown as a, a really great way to how to introduce characters very yeah. quickly. Yeah. Like you immediately know, oh, those guys just want to get paid. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, what's yeah. the tension between the two yeah. women? Oh, I reckon she's a little bit more totally. promiscuous and. Totally. Uh, her and does she resent the other one for that? And then you go over and it's like, oh yeah, he's the nice guy who's pretty laid back, and oh here's the chief just trying to do his thing, and yep. she's she's probably uh, second in charge, I guess, and a little bit no bullshit. He's probably a bit soft because of it. She's probably tougher than him. <laughs> like, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're no, like, no, and you take in all that information, absolutely, absolutely. and as a as a moviegoer, you don't realise it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then when they start getting picked off, you it's give like, a shit. what? And you care. Yeah. This... And and this movie's got, you know, you got Ryan Reynolds who can who can deliver a line. Mm. You got Jake Gyllenhaal who always brings a, a slightly weird energy to everything he does. Yeah. And it, sometimes it can be off putting and sometimes it's like Nightcrawler is best, one of yeah. the most underrated performances yeah. of uh of recent years. Uh Rebecca Ferguson, I think, is a cracking uh, action actor. I thought she was fantastic in the Mission Impossible that I saw her in. So you and uh, some of the other actors uh, in it are, you know, pretty good as well. 
And it just, you, you know, you, it just doesn't resonate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you just, you just don't connect to them. And Why? Because you're not introduced properly? Yeah, you just, you know, they, you know, they, they just kind of go for easy tropes. Yeah. Oh, she, he's watching his wife give birth. Oh, yeah. no. oh, this is the yeah. mistake that every... You know, it's Avengers with Hawkeye. Oh, he's got a farm. Yeah. Oh, now he's got character. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, 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 the, the, the character was the fact that these two hot super spies are just pals. Yeah. That's the character. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Trust that. How, you know, take out that whole family scene yep. and drop in a scene where it's the two of them having a drink, yep. talking about all the fucking super-powered idiots that they hang out with yep. and having having little jokes at Stark's expense and, yep. you know, maybe drop no, it totally. that Hawkeye pervs on Thor, you know, <laughs> and Cap makes them feel inferior and they all like Dr. Banner, but fuck, he puts them on edge. Yeah. You know, like that. Yeah, absolutely. That would, imagine that for four minutes between those two who know how to act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would have been heaps better. Totally. But it's a mistake I think that most of these big movies make now. It's like the assumption that you care because you've come to watch the movie. And it's like, but unless you make me give a shit mm. about the people that are, you know, getting crushed and killed and blown up and blah, blah, blah. Mm. I don't fucking care. Like, no, I really that's don't what care. Logan did so well. What was that? That's what Logan did so well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, they built that little girl up from nothing. Yeah. Like, she was a... She... Like, I, I'm not saying this is a is a bad thing, but when we first meet her, she's a cliche. Yeah. You know, and then... So, we immediately recognise what she is, and then they just slowly build her in a way that by the time that she punches him in the face, you are laughing at the audacity yeah, of it, yeah, but you yeah. believe it. Yeah. And then by the time you get to the final scene... That little girl's acting is on the money. You go, oh, yeah, no, I feel like this is exactly where that character yeah, totally. would be. You know? Totally. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. And this is also a movie that has a guy with sharp claws ramming him through people's faces. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah. they don't have to be disparate. It just seems like I, I, it just seemed like a golden rule of movie making that you've got to care about the characters. I yeah. think it's, it's, it's strange that it was forgotten for... A long time. I guess when once special effects became a big thing, and, yeah. You know, the, 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 the thing should. Did you like um, Rogue One? Uh, you know, uh, it was a little bit like The Force Awakens for me. Mm. Uh, not 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 similar movies, yeah. but uh, I quite enjoyed the spectacle of it the first time, and then I saw it a second time, and I went, uh nah, I enjoyed the spectacle." <laughs> oh, I couldn't. St- Damn that fucking movie. Yeah, right. I couldn't stand it. And again, it was this thing of like, you've not, you've introduced the characters, but it's like, I don't know the, like, there's no personality to it. It's like, oh, I'm, uh, I, my, my dad left when I was seven and that's my character. And, you know, yeah. oh, I'm blind and that's my, that's not a character. That's a character trait. Yeah. But like, so yeah, you by the it. end, I was so full of hate. You know, once it once I be, it became once the robot died, I was like, oh, okay, everyone's gonna die. Yeah, that like, you're not gonna kill the cool, cute robot if you're not gonna kill fucking everybody. Yeah, and it, I was just loathe and 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 uh, doubled up with the fact that it was just this massive CG spectacle, which I've prefaced that I'm already not a fan of. Mm. It was just this double thing of me just sitting there, just so hate filled, just going, just fucking die, just every one of you, just wishing death on them all, so it could just be over. And I know that that's you know. Uh, Star Wars is great, but it was just... Oh, it's not great. I think that's really unfair. It's not a great movie. <laughs> you know, um, you didn't enjoy Ben Mendelsohn? I thoroughly enjoyed Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah, I didn't mind. Like, there was like, aspects I thought, of it that I, I liked. But I thought he brought some performance to it that yeah, I liked was... That it was like... That was... It was like... It was like Michael Jordan putting up 40 in a team that loses by 15. <laughs> you know? Like, there was a point where he turned around uh, right at the start where... Mads Mikkelsen lies about his wife and, yeah. and the way he portrays having like real genuine emotion for him to th- and then just still casually order them to go hunting for the little girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, fuck, that is a masterclass in a movie that nobody... Hey, has, did everyone see that? Did you see that? <laughs> he just did that. Like, should we just... Like, let's take the day off and think about that one bit of acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The balls to be just he an was Aussie so great. cunt in a, in a Star Wars movie. Oh, yeah. It was fantastic. And yeah. um, I also... Uh, and I just... This is... This, to me, is what is kind of wrong with, uh, you know, these big budget movie-making story decisions. I think the highlight of the film is just that great scene where you just see Darth Vader fuck a lot of people up. <laughs> like, it's just great because 
in the past, the first time you see him, you go, how impressive is this guy? And then he cuts up fucking, you know, the old dude, yeah, like yeah, in yeah. one of the weakest lightsaber duels. Like it's the first one you see, and yeah. it's like Sir Alec Guinness is going, "Fuck this! Uh, this is a bit heavy, isn't it?" <laughs> <laughs> like, and then uh, the the second one is pretty good, and but then the third one is, you know, it's all a little bit too much hocus pocus with the yeah, yeah, from yeah. the emperor. Yeah, uh, you know, and so you haven't really seen Darth Vader fucking go for it. Yeah. Now it's been admitted that they. Added that at the last second. Yeah. Well, you, this this is the movie I would have made. Make a Darth Vader movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make yeah. a movie where Darth Vader is fucking going throughout the galaxy and smashing shit <laughs> up. And are you telling me it would not make over a billion dollars? Oh, billions. Him walking around crushing people. What you put in the movie is people. Worse than Darth Vader, because what you can do with Vader is even though he's an arsehole, he's got a code. Yeah, so we yeah, can yeah. We, we can kind of, oh, okay, yeah, I'll be on his yeah, side. Yeah, turn him into a hero where he's taking down an the worst dictators. Yeah, taking out huts, you know, oh, that kind of, like, yeah. who would want to see him fight through a whole lot of bounty hunters and then get to a hut and then crush the hut's throat in this <laughs> great, you want some CGI? There you go, Hollywood. Like, that would be amazing. <laughs> that I would not be surprised if there is a whole fucking series. Copyright, of... Justin Hamilton. No one's talking about I wouldn't be surprised, huh? Man, that yeah, would once be they do brilliant. all the Han Solo, because, you know, they've got to keep it within the known universe of Star Wars. Yeah. You know, which I think will be the downfall in the end, because it's just like, how many fucking stories about these fucking characters? Well, oh. well I, I reckon if you can develop it, like, if you can develop, what I would be guessing they would do is with the, you know, the next chapter Star Wars movies, mm. what you do is you progress the storytelling techniques there. So then you can slowly slot in different types of things yeah, as right. you go forward. But that's how I would do it anyway. Fuck, it's gonna, but, it's gonna have to all collapse soon, isn't it? This fucking ridiculous. Uh, like Marvel, this... Marvel, like what Marvel doesn't realize it's done is you know the last Secret Wars series where that started in Hickman's Avengers, where parallel universes were crashing into each other and destroying yeah, yeah, each yeah. other. I, I don't know it, but I know the concept. Until eventually there was a singularity and Doom took over and ruled everything. Yeah. Marvel started that in the in the real world with movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's just movie universes crashing into movie yeah. universes <laughs> until it will all explode and it'll be fucking Michael Bay in charge of everything. <laughs> Ugh, please. The only one who can still make money, you know. <laughs> Nolan will probably not make enough money <laughs> with Dunkirk, so he'll be... He'll be ousted. Yeah, he'll be fucking... Oh, we've, we're not going to let you make any more really good films unless you make the new Terminator. Uh, <laughs> oh, boo. Um, have, you, have you seen the new Justice League trailer? Yeah. <laughs> is, is that... I pray, I pray to God that that movie is as shit as uh, Batman vs. Superman and as Suicide Squad because... It's it, only if it was that shit could it be hugely enjoyable to me. Right. I love exquisite shit. Yeah. Like the, and Batman versus Superman is like a masterclass in how to just make the worst. It's the worst movie ever. It's fucking. It's like room level genius. You know the yeah. room. Just everything. Every decision about it is just so off the mark. I really hope this is the same. Martha it, is the so new. Much pleasure. Martha is the new Rosebud. <laughs> 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 oh, Martha was their mums. That's why they stopped fighting. <laughs> That's cool. Wasn't seeing that. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, what did you think of the trailer for uh, Justice League? Uh, I just didn't really think anything. No, of course not. Like, I, like I didn't even have a bad reaction to it. I just kind of watched it, and it just washed over me. <sighs> and exhausting. Yeah. Look, I think if they somehow keep a little bit of the inherent camp, maybe that might work. Like, the the Aquaman on the side of the... Uh, I don't know. It's just... just Pixels punch and but pixels. you know, but you know what's funny is the um, I, I'm I'm I've still got the mildest of hopes for Wonder Woman. I I really enjoyed that trailer. I think she's great. You didn't think so? I thought it I'm looked just, like fun. I'm just, oh, I just don't like Zack Snyder. And he's his, not directed Zack Snyder, know, but he stinks all he, over it. His stink is all... Oh, that fast, right. slow, that fast, slow mode. I'm not into the fast, slow. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not into that either. It's like, yeah, but right, I'm, it was I'm great a, in 300. But, but I'm, on a, I'm on a bit of a Chris Pine, uh, you know, I'm on Chris Pine 
Island. I'm putting, oh. I'm, I'm, putting, <laughs> I'm putting stock into Chris Pine. Yeah. After Hell or High Water, where I thought he was spectacular. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm investing I'm in I'm one of Chris the rare Pine. people that didn't, didn't dig that movie. Oh, uh, well, you're wrong. I, I, well, you no, know. no, no. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> But no, I'm investing in Chris Pine. I think he's going to pay out. You think so? Yeah. I think... Uh, uh, but he's got to get away from Hollywood. He's got to do some more That's low, all low budget All of this is going to die in a couple of years anyway. VR headsets will come in and that will kill all art that isn't fully immersible fucking yep. reality games or, you know. That's why you'll be a connoisseur. Like, in, in 20 years, if you're still watching, you know, movies, if you're a movie buff, that'll be like, you know, being a fucking stamp collector now or something, where yeah. it's just like, oh, that guy's into movies. Oh, that's I would point. be pretty wrapped if that was the case. I because think Because if that was, if, if this whole thing collapsed and movies turned into what you said, mm. that would mean that most things would be lower budget, which would mean most things would have to be more creative. Yeah. And I could hang out in nice little dingy cinemas with yeah. people who are drinking red wine while the movie's playing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, thoroughly enjoy something. Totally. Partly in French. <laughs> in yeah. black and white for one splash of colour. Yeah, it's... The blue was... tear that falls across the young lass's eye. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that's sort of... Can you imagine a guy... Uh, say, say someone that's eight years old now. In, right. In 20 years. 28 yeah. years old. Growing up in a, in a digital age. Yeah. Technology in their hand at all times. By then, virtual reality will be indistinguishable from... Reality, reality. Yeah. Can you? Re- There's not going to be many 28 year olds in 20 whatever going. Oh, I've heard Sunset Boulevard's a really good movie. I better check that one out. You know right. what I mean? There's going to be so much other stuff compared just just content well, and stuff you know. and 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 plus technologies that we can't even fucking fathom of it. Yeah. This is all assuming we're not all fucking dead, right. which is. <laughs> I don't know. Probably odds on a, 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 a probably a better a better fucking reality to expect than the other one. I'm, uh, you know, weirdly enough, uh, I'm not too worried about uh, a war or, uh, you know, environmentally, yeah. it's fucking horrific. Um, but I'm not worried about a war or anything. You know what I'm, a, I'm a little bit curious about is what's going to be our endpoint? Because I guess, you know, once we die. It will continue without us in a very selfish way. I hate that about the world. But I reckon it should go with me. But um, <laughs> if I if okay, I can't Trump. if I can't <laughs> if I can't envisage it anymore, why should anyone else? <laughs> but um, where science is going, like yeah. you know, with the things that we're finding on other planets, like you know, the photos of Pluto. I have spent so much time looking at them. <laughs> I am fascinated really? that we have those photos of a planet that uh-huh. it's like it's further than Fiji. It yeah. is a long way away, yeah, yeah. you know, and they yeah. are amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the things that we're discovering in further, you know, Wait a minute, is it just... black holes spiraling around black holes. They reckon they're going to be able to get the first photo of a black hole through this really <laughs> tele, uh, setting up telescopes in a way that, and it, you know, will have to be a clear night so they can yeah, triangulate. Yeah, yeah an angle to get a photo of a black hole. And you know what? For some reason, that just sends me into agoraphobic panic because uh-huh. sometimes you just go, do we, oh, do we need to see that? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty big. Like, what happens if we get its attention? I don't know. Like, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, space is fucking scary. Well, what do you, th- yeah. Well, what do you, what do you, what do you, how fundamentally do you think it will change human consciousness if, you know, they're unveiling this new telescope in 2024 or something. Right. It's, you know, the size of a fucking mountain. Yeah. And it's going to take photos that we can't even fathom. Yeah. You know, what if they... Like, what would happen if a fucking... If all these, like, satellite photos of whole other civilizations came back to us? Do yeah. you think it would fundamentally change the consciousness of humans? Or do you think that we're all such an, at, at, at such a point of information saturation and exhaustion that we'd all just be like oh yeah of course you know what i mean like news amazing things happen every like sci-fi amazing shit happens every day yeah doesn't it it doesn't even register anymore yeah you know they they found those seven we we own jack kirby mother boxes we got a mother box in our pocket yeah yeah, totally. I know. Like that's amazing. It's but it's just. I'm going to make not... mine ping ping. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your ringtone. Um, <laughs> but it's not. But it, exactly, it doesn't even occur to you that you've got the you've got the repository of all of the world's information in your pocket 
yeah. at all times, yeah. accessible in an instant. Yeah. That didn't exist 10 years ago. And it's, it doesn't even occur to you that that's amazing. Right. In fact, it, it's more, it, it irritates you more than you would even consider that it's incredible. Because right. it's not fast enough or it doesn't do this or, yep. you know, whatever. The screen's cracked. It's, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. It's amazing. It's and amazing. And I'm like, like, what are we going to discover? Like, you know, we're looking further and further back to the beginning of time and all of that is so fascinating and makes me want to run around the streets naked screaming pulling what's left of my hair out all over my body going what is the point yeah 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 <laughs> what if they find out that we're all just code and we're all just in some fucking man like kids fucking yeah imagine drive. like they you know they go back and the first thing they find is x y times l and it's like oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. He's just been pix- watching we're, the whole we're time. pixels and then i'll just become com- out of the computer and kick his ass <laughs> and then I'll type in some new code that'll make everything better I'll just fix it but what if there was no point to it what if we're just the AI in a really 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 elaborate version of Grand Theft Auto right well I hope someone's going to come into the baseball bat and kick the fuck out of me <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. what if it like you know did you ever play The Sims no I didn't yeah I used to play The Sims and it was you know I'd play it when I was 16, and, you know, at first I would try and make a really good life for my Sims. Right. You know, I'd try and interact with the neighbours, blah, blah, blah. And then one day I accidentally um, deleted um, the toilet, and suddenly I noticed the guy was, like, freaking out. He's looking up at me, going, like, praying for the toilet. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then eventually he just shat himself. And there no, was, he yeah, didn't. I swear to fucking God. The, I swear to He fucking, shit himself. He shit himself. And there was like stink lines coming off him. No. And I was howling with laughter. And that's when you became evil. And that's when I became Satan. So I yeah. started doing stuff like deleting the doors. So they can't get out of the house. And oh, they start Jesus. going stir crazy. And they're getting really? depressed and they're crying and they're banging their head on the no. wall. No. And then I had a family. Is that, can you still get this game? Yeah, it still exists. Oh, I'm getting it. And then I had a family and I built them a pool. And dad went swimming one day and I deleted the ladder. Right. And he can't get out of the pool if there's no ladder. So he's just swimming endless laps. And he's getting more and more tired. And suddenly his wife and kid run out of the house. And they're on the side of the pool running up and down alongside him, like screaming. And <laughs> this is so fucked up. And looking up at me, like the player, going like, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 like pl- praying, praying for help, like give him a ladder so he can get out of the pool. Eventually he drowned and a little tombstone came up in the backyard. And I thought it was the funniest fucking oh thing God. I had ever done in my life. And in that moment, it was like, well, what if this is just, like, what if God is a 16-year-old at a desktop computer and we're just fucking in an elaborate yeah. Sim City? Yeah. And every fucking bad shit, you know, he's just hitting keys on a keyboard going, ah, ah, terrorist attack, click, yeah. ah, 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 oh, tsunami, click. Yeah. Ah, ah, look, that would, that him, would explain him. why I keep going to the personal trainer, but I don't seem to be losing weight off my stomach. <laughs> Ah, uh, look how much work he's doing. He can just keep that little bump. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, he's worked even harder today. Keep that little bump. You'll be right. Because order and, 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 and everything is nice, but from an elevated perspective, like, chaos is much more fun. Yeah. You know, it's much more interesting. By the way, like... I had a feeling that after you finished that story about how you destroyed those Sims, you were going to leap out of that lounge and stab me in the throat. Like, that felt like the last story I should ever hear. That was, uh, that is murderous. Is there, is, is there, I wonder if there's a one, like, I, I wish there was a version of that game where, you know, I wonder if there is, where you get to play the, the Norse gods and you can just treat the Norsemen terribly and then yeah, yeah, they can yeah. pray to you and then you can just go, Ah, oh, I'll be Thor. Uh, give there, there, there's an there. iPhone game called Pocket God where Pocket you just torture God. you just torture people on an island. You Jesus just send electric Christ. bolts to <laughs> blast them. You can tell a lot about how sick a person is. Like you can tell a lot about how sick a person is when they sit down to play Grand Theft Auto. What's the first thing that they do? Right. And uh, it's usually something really fucking twisted. Well, you, you know, you know what I do, but, and it's because I don't do it in the real world. I drive a car. <laughs> without that, without fail, obeying, I, the, obeying all the road rules, yeah. not going onto the pavement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I go and get a, I go and get a license. Oh, uh, God. Get, I get maintenance on the car. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my buddies used to once we'd open the whole world up. We used to have competitions where it was just like who can, you know, who can do the most fucked up thing in, in this world before the police come and, and take them out. Right. And, Which is how uh, most people people play. would get incredibly imaginative with right. uh, with how elaborate they'd go in just creating these massive spectacles. And, yeah, 
you know, I mean, I feel like that stuff is, it's almost like a Frisbee for a dog. Right. You know, it, it satisfies an inherent bloodlust within us. Yeah. In a completely you know, safe, no one's getting hurt. Yeah. You can still just be really, you know, fucked up. It, 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 well, it's no coincidence that these games are the biggest selling pieces of media of all time. Yeah. That's a, that's an interesting way of looking at it because uh, normally people would say that kind of violence breeds uh, real violence. I think it's the reverse. But yeah, is this where deep down we're uh, flawed animals? So Oops. this is where we get it out of our system yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, are better in the real world. There's a savagery in every human being. Yeah. In, in you know we're humans, uh, and and most of our history is riddled with violence. It's only mm. relatively recently that we've become. You know, civilized, civilized per and, se. Yeah, and not fucking, you know, putting fucking axes through each other's heads to fucking solve oh, a yeah. dispute. Yeah. Um, I've been watching Vikings. Ugh. Have you watched it? Never. It's great. Is it great? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like, it's great. Right. I'm uh, I'm two episodes off the end of the first season, and uh, Travis Fimmel is, like, he's got a fucking Bogan Brad Pitt quality to him in this. <laughs> he's fucking great. And the the... What's the woman's name, Katarina Whitfield or something like that. She's like a cross between Scarlett Johansson and Charlize Theron. You know, the, you yeah, know how right. they're both good yeah. action heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she kind of embodies, you know, the strength and look mildly of both of them. and Because uh-huh. uh, she, she's a handmaiden as well as his wife. Yeah, right. And she is fucking, she's hardcore. Like, she's <laughs> great, but fair. And uh, because it's all based on the true stories. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they kind of mix in. So it's based on the true stories. It mixes in a little bit of myth in a way that you you see what they see. Uh-huh. There's a there's a trickster kind of character called Floki, who is <laughs> you know the false Loki, and he's a little bit. He's almost like this kind of goth fucking Norseman who builds things and is a bit left of centre. Who, yeah. who when you see him, you go, oh yeah, he's interesting. And then about halfway through, I'm like, fuck, how good's Floki? You know, <laughs> uh, Gabriel Burns in it. Oh and, great, I love you know, guy. classic uh, good actor where you're watching, going, oh yeah, that character's this, and then at the end you go, oh no, he was that, uh-huh. and it's uh, yeah, I've enjoyed it so yeah, far. Yeah, great. Um, but uh, sorry, the the reason I went on that tangent is because you know it's pretty savage, like it's it's yeah, man, on brutal and, people, and because it's a smaller budget, often smaller budget shows the violence is more realistic in, yeah. in many ways. Yep. Um, and so uh, I often sort of watch an episode and then just go, whew, I feel pretty good. Yeah, man. Like, it's out the system. That fucking, oh, really? So you get a catharsis from watching Yeah, it? yeah, I watch it yeah, and just no, go, totally. that feels yeah, good. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. in us. It, it is yeah. in us. Like, I think the, uh, you know, Holocaust don't happen because uh, everyone deep down isn't fucking savage. Yeah. It's, you know, these things happen because it's it's not... It's actually not difficult to whip humans up into a, a, a frenzy. Yeah. Um, so, I, look, I don't know what the science on if it actually does, if, if violent video games and stuff uh, actually do help channel that or get at, get it out of people's systems. But I've always seen it. Like, like I said, I've always seen it as like a frisbee for a dog. Yeah. You know, like I've never in my life hit anyone, been in a fight. Yeah. Don't, you know, done any like physical violence. Yeah. Uh, but if you put me in front of Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto or some horrifically, like, I'm, I'm a fucking animal. Yeah. The stuff I do, it's, you know, it's it's sadistic shit. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. but, you know, and, and I'm not the only one, you know. Most of my friends that are that sounded very like you're just saying that, that sounded like you're just saying the anti-lyrics to John Lennon's Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, like my most passive friend in the world, the first thing you'll do in Grand Theft Auto is shoot an ambulance driver through the head and steal the ambulance and fucking go on rampages in an ambulance. <laughs> in an ambulance. Just for the dramatic irony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better he gets it out in the game. That's, uh, that's what I say. Um, we should uh, finish up. But just, be, just before we go, I, um, I, uh, I'm not really allowed to talk about this properly, but I'm allowed to say the, a little bit. And I watched the uh, first episode of um, the last season of The Leftovers, and oh, yeah. it was spectacular. Oh, really? Like, it is. Like, this is going to... This is some fucking Alan Moore storytelling shit going on. There really? is there is resonance across three seasons. Each season is standalone. Like, if they'd finished after the first season, 
I would have put that up there with the first season of True Detective, mm, you know. Mm. And then they came back with the second season that was even better. And this third season is only eight episodes. And they are fucking nailing it. And what network does The Leftovers? HBO. Oh, right. Okay. And uh, there, is a, there is a moment in the series where they have nailed the older regional Aboriginal sense of humour. Oh, wow. Nailed it. You know how it's a very kind of direct, innocent, loaded, dry kind of humour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, they nailed it. (laughs) And I could not stop laughing at how well they had done this. And then by the end of the episode, something happened that was so profound. I had body shivers. I was uh, so kind of broken hearted for this uh, character. And I was like, man, that is good storytelling. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Awesome. I am... uh, pretty wrapped in this <laughs> I found I, I, I'm watching this and watching Atlanta I have found really inspiring yeah I've got to get on to both of those oh uh, Atlanta like I just finished it last night mm-hmm. it's like I loved it mm. like I just I found it so inspiring to be re- reminded or convinced or taught how much you can do in 22 minutes of yeah. storytelling but Donald Glover, man, and 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 the team that worked on that, you know, you'd see the same kind of directors and writers yeah, and names yeah, coming yeah. up. And um, man, I, I think there's an episode that is the Black American Network, and it, the whole episode is borderline parody. Yeah. Like it's set in the in the real world of that of that series, but it's borderline par- parody, and it is probably the best. 22 minutes of satire I've seen in maybe five years. Wow. Like, it wow. is. It's on the money. Uh. And, it, you know, good satire is so close to often tripping itself up, but yeah. doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what this... There's a few pol- hop, uh, potholes where you go, oh, be careful. No, whoa, hey, <laughs> nailed it. You know, if you really wanted to look at it that way. Yeah, but, great. Yeah, I thought it was amazing. Yeah, I've got to get onto both. Of really these. unconventional, in 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 subtle ways as well. Like there's a whole episode that is essentially about up until this point, uh, one of the characters' girlfriends, yeah, right. uh, who's the mother of his child, yeah. and it's just and she's, you know, she's been a supporting character up until this. She gets a whole episode, and it is. Fantastic! Like one of the highlights of the yeah, season, yeah, yeah. where you just get to know her. You suddenly understand her. She is funny. She is gorgeous. You know, like the whole. She can nail the dramatic. She has a bit of slapstick humor at the end that she fucking nails the landing. Yeah. Like the and 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 that bit of slapstick not only is um really funny, but um I don't want to tell you what it is because it's too good. Uh, it's not only funny, but it reveals something so intrinsic about her character that yeah, you kind of right. you understand why she's still sort of in this relationship. Uh huh. Cool. Man. Yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. It's worthwhile checking out. Um, all right, well, because I have to go and to work, do radio. Uh, what's coming up for you? I'm going to put this up either what's today, Wednesday. I might put it up Wednesday night, or at the very least Thursday morning. Oh, same as always. Uh, Sunday night, Fuck Club, um, Chippo Hotel, oh, seven thirty or so. Uh, that's been going great. We're having a good time. And other than that, just gigging around town. Yeah, great. Yeah. Great, that's cool. Uh, I will be down in Melbourne this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, uh, my show at the Town Hall, uh, 6 p.m. on the Saturday, 5 p.m. on the Sunday. We have The Shelf on the Monday, only a few tickets left for that. And then uh, I head back to Sydney, so I'll be back uh, the following weekend. Uh, So I'll give you details about that then. But uh, if you're in Sydney, uh, on the 8th of April, if that's the Saturday off the top of my head, uh, I'll be here in Sydney doing support for William J. Anderson at the Sydney Opera House. Oh, yeah, two shows. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, you know when uh, when Will says, "Would you like to perform at the Sydney Opera House?" You say, oh, "Hang on, what do I have to cancel?" Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it's the Sydney Opera House, and yeah. you should never take it for granted, don't you think? Yeah. Which, uh, what what room in the Opera House? Oh, it's you know it's Will. Like it's the one with uh, five hundred and seventy eight thousand. The main, the main, yeah, the yeah. main one. Yeah, two thousand people. Whoa. Yeah. 
Oh, yes. That's a fucking cool gig. It's, you know, it's, um, it's a real privilege, you know, yeah, to be able great. to do that kind of thing. And you, you, you never want to take it for granted and you never want to think that it's going to, you know, that I'm just going to do this forever. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, you get yeah. the opportunity, you take I've, it. I've stood on that stage once. A friend of mine was a stage hand at the opera for many years. Yeah. But, uh, obviously the theater was empty. Right. Uh, oh, I, yeah, but that's... Uh, yeah, no, it was overwhelming. It was just standing there. It was like, whoa, imagine walking out to a full house in this place. That's yeah. That's fucking great. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. And uh, Will's audience is always really nice to me. So, fuck, I hope I haven't put the moxie on that. But anyway, uh, they... <laughs> So far, have been really nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see that as a challenge, people. Just enjoy the show. Uh, but, yeah, that'll be on the 8th of April. So. Cool. All right, man. I will see you when I get back from Melbourne. Melbourne.